because here's the thing I don't well respected internet commentator look do you guys know that out there in the regular world people that do what we do and talk our mind on the internet the reputation is we're a bunch of blowhards and we're crazy and if you look around you can see why that's not necessarily an undeserved reputation so I see myself as rising above that I do it for itself there is abs it's the, there is the opposite of some sort of positive reputation going on right I do it for the ex actual activity of exploring ideas with other minds as points and counterpoints because the idea that I want to talk about politics to unseen perfidy because that'll give me legitimacy as a political talker that's not this domain there isn't legitimacy here we have to have interest in the ideas itself or else it's pointless because if you think that the little feeling of fame is anything like real fame or anything like a positive on your reputation at large no it's a small group of people that might respect your opinion they're very small they're not running the government the value of having that small group is to talk to them and get the ideas back and forth and that is what I test people on right are you going to bring up I, I did more even than whether you come to the good conclusions if you come to interesting topics then I find that interesting and I want to engage because if the conclusions are somewhat different well one I expect that that's just everybody's different if you look close enough and two it makes for a conversation that can happen because two people disagreeing are like yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh you said it and mm -hmm. yeah, you can say that again but really actually don't bother we heard it you know it's like with differences you can go hey but what about this hey what about this oh well that's a point but I think this on that I love that reasoning and the process of it you know and if someone like Rob aka unseen perfidy were more strong-hearted and thick-skinned and strong-willed it would be great because he's knowledgeable on his issues so I assume he'll have knowledge of why he believes this why would he call the Philippines a successful counterinsurgency because see the way I would put it in shorthand and it could be expanded but this is the shorthand is we went all like Nazi style with waterboarding and various kinds of torture and concentration camps and making everybody from all the villages go into the concentration camps so that anybody that's out in the wild is breaking the law and you could kill them had an engagement policy of 10 years and older armed or not 10 years and old old enough to hold a gun you were legit uh, to, to act on by a rules of engagement okay so if that's a good counterinsurgency then there's a dark message about a good counterinsurgency is evil as a motherfucker so maybe there is no such thing if you want to say that evil as a motherfucker is an, a, an option plan so that's a tricky one would be a tricky one for Rob to to look good but it could be done I mean, if we were having a debate exercise, I could take that side of the argument. There's various ways. Um, though what I would do myself um, is what I just told you. It's like, yeah, it was successful. It did its job of controlling the Philippines. But it was morally reprehensible. And indeed, we should have just turned. It's obvious to me in retrospect. I don't think you know you can talk about it's obvious also why they this was not even a possibility at the time a realistic possibility that the people with the power to decide this you know would make not it but in retrospect we should not have taken the Philippines at, at all we should have left the Philippines to the Filipino revolutionaries Right, they had won. They were already fight before the Spanish-American War. They were fighting their revolution. It wasn't like we created a vacuum, scaring the Spanish away. We could have even left the Spanish there. They were about to get their ass kicked out anyway. Or if we wanted to go in and help flush them out, and then let the Filipinos go in there and establish trade relations, buy a warehouse in Hong Kong, and get some action in the Pacific. But no, we wanted to have this empire and stuff. So those kinds of disagreements to me, oh, it's great. And if I lose it, I know that I will only think I have lost if I have 
Well, it really is impossible for me to think that I've lost. Because if I'm proved, if it's proved to me that, wait, it should be this other thing. I should think this different thing. Like, I should think of pi as definite, even though in written digits, it needs an infinite number of terms to describe. You know, even in a polynomial base. But so what? Who's to say that that makes it less definite? No, it is one of the most definite things possible, this ratio between, you know, circle and square, right? And is that a loss? No, because I was trying to get ideas, new ideas. So I got one that happened to be a step ahead, you know, and I go, you know what? You're right. Did I, I didn't see that as a loss. I saw that as one of the few things I've gained. And if it was a loss, then okay, I guess on the internet, the losses are where you get a prize. And when you win, no prize. <laughs> so if you explore this space, we're either gonna, I'm either gonna find out, oh, you know what, you do, well, like, okay, already, for example, um, I've already been brought to, um, to admit something that I already knew, but I wasn't thinking it wasn't part of the reasoning because it hadn't been brought up. But yes, in arguing about the Snowden stuff with Skep and Unseen Perfidy, even though I thought about it a lot before, I wasn't really thinking about the fact that, yeah, okay, I agree in wartime, you need special loose lips sink ships kind of stuff. That's true. It's, you know. So, and Unseen had said, uh, well, how do you really tell the difference? What's the difference between wartime and peacetime? That's an interesting topic. I think there's answers to that. There's also some truth to if people are going to be killing each other all the time. Is that the war rules? Is it martial law? You know, I think martial law for decades like they had in Egypt, that's not okay. But, um... And, and in the same sense, the concept of wartime, you're supposed to know when that's your focus. You know, it's not every time that there's uh, unrest in a city after the Super Bowl, it's not a war. So, okay, there's some line. What about when there's a dispute? Um, you know, what about, you know, Pakistan and India? You know, I think it's good we have a way of saying, well, they're not at war. There's some conflicts, you know, but we're not at war, even though they sometimes shoot each other. Um, and I think a contest about that is is a fun way to do it. So none of that is crying wolf, and none of that is pigeonholing the other person. Um, I think more fair is that to say that I do is that people pigeonhole themselves, and I go bang, that's where you are, and they're like, stop trying to pigeonhole me, but I'll do it in a way that there's always escape hatches where you could just go, no, that's not me. And fine, that's not them. But they really like that pigeonhole, and then they'll go back, and it's something like this, because nowhere did I tell someone how to comport themselves. Quite the opposite. I'm being told to tell someone. I'm being, I was being, well, or asked, ultimatum, whatever you want to call an ultimatum, to tell Frank how to comport himself before I could talk to Unseen Perfidy. So that seems like the car opposite of what you're saying, heavy traffic ahead. And uh, yeah, I just I just don't really don't perceive this whole experience the way you guys seem to perceive it. Like, like for example, a big thing is people from all the YouTube atheists and all through, to me it's obvious from their behavior they like talking to people they disagree with. But to ask them what they think, and it's like, no, it's like a duty. I have to do this. It's out there, and I'm just driven, and, and there's a re and it's not because I like it. Uh, well, I kind of been there because I've been doing this online discussion for like three decades now, and so I can, I, I have memories of feelings, but see, when I was in my late teens and it would get me really upset some online argument I realized look I either have to stop doing it or figure out why I enjoy it and the answer to me is one face that you like talking to people you disagree with and so you the techniques are to try to uh, be able to do that be the kind of person that can do that um, and um, the other thing is to have a sense of humor and then the other thing is to map out all the different kinds of thinking and what they are and, you know, have a con concept of 
how things are related, how far apart these ideas, and you know, in in some sort of a map, um, either a you know a graph or an actual map, you know, just to the layout of land, you get that all down so people are, and you can refer, oh, antinatalism, we know what that is because of this discussion. It's a word a lot of us know what you're talking about, right? Would have taken sentences and sentences years ago, so that's, we're building up vocabularies and things. That's how I take it so that I can enjoy it. If it gets frustrating, it's just the energy. It's just like in, you know, uh, debate. You can get nervous and stuff. There can be fight or flight kind of feelings. But it's it's a uh, it's a contest, and you can overcome the butterflies. And by, in my case, you know, just realize that okay, well, it's not worth. Like a rule I have for myself is, you know, if I find myself going to sleep ever, oh, there's the, you know, it's time to check my head. There's no way whatever the person said that it's their fault that I'm not just using it as part of this um, uh, intellectual hobby and machine all right and so the final thing is yeah i get this but i a, a lot i i don't know if everybody does or it's just me or whatever but this idea like that there's an ulterior motive what i'm really saying is something else what and then people don't tell me well what is it that i really believe you think what's your theory on what i must really believe that i would be a lie oh yeah i was told that Rob called me a liar and the video took down. I don't know. I'm taking that with a grain of salt. It could be a misunderstanding of some sort. But whatever. When you get called a liar, um, I think heavy traffic's called. About what? What am I hiding? What would I gain by hiding? And if I hide it forever and you never knew, then it's not even so much hiding, but just a fiction that I've created. So what is the fiction that I've created? Because if there's one thing I've done in my presentation, you know, and, and by being always different backdrops and, and, and s stuff is, I've tried to put that I'm not pushing one vibe of a fiction. Because you can't put every idea up because people wouldn't understand you and there's some things that are personal, but even if you wanted to, you just, it's infinite detail. And so the best thing I could think of for vlog honesty is to be all over the map. Sometimes, you know, do a video after coming back late from a party. Sometimes do do it early in the morning. Do it in the midday. Do it when you're earnest. Do it when you're having, uh, when you're laughing at everything. Do it in different m moods. What is the ulterior mode of my plan? Because I take it sort of as a compliment. You know, I, I do have a plan, and if I could tell it to you all in one sentence, I would. If I, but. What's ulterior about it? There's nothing that I ever come close to that I don't jump at a chance to explain this plan and worldview. And one thing I rarely do is tell people how to comport themselves, right? As in an instructional sense, I might make commentary about how they comport themselves, but I don't tell them heavy traffic how to comport themselves that I know of. So I'm just assuming you're taking some of my words that way. Just tell me which words it is so I can figure out where the misunderstanding is coming from or alternately realize, oh yeah, I do believe that. I just forgot. But um, <clears throat> there you go.